If you want it. <laughs> Something I should let you know. Uh, what's going on, y'all? Welcome to Craig Facts slash Roast the Host slash uh, Big John AD slash A Little Bit of Everything slash man. Happy Monday. We in here, man. Hopefully, y'all had a blessed weekend. We talking loud, man. Yes, Two indeed. Things I want to pub, man. I'm hosting every Friday. If you want to get roasted every Friday, I'm hosting down at Station 1640. Station 1640. Oh, yeah, you got up. that popping. Yeah. yeah, Friday, right? If you, Yep. If you're a comedian or you do music, you want to showcase, there'll be a link you can click. Click that. You can pay me. I'll let you come up and do a song in front of a great audience. We're going to create content with it as well. Make sure y'all be a part of the cause. Also, November 1st, I'm at the Tampa Improv, me and K-Dub. And then that next day... November 2nd, I'll be in Chandler, Arizona at Mike Drop. And then on the 30th of November, me, Ja, AD, yeah. Ken, a gang of us going to be down there doing comedy and roasting. I bet you we're going to probably sell out three, four shows. Oh, we going to be at, though? We're going to be at Mike Drop in, in San Diego. Yes, indeed. San Diego, baby. Right All on the homies, Mesa Boulevard. Pull up. Pull up. If you yeah. know me from Dago, pull up, man. We cracking jokes. We roasting. We doing everything. Bring a diaper because you might shun yourself from laughter. Hey, it's going to be funny as hell, man. Pull up. November 30th. Oh, man. We're going to have a ball, man. Watch this as we grow, man. Hell we're yeah. To, hey, man, we've been watching the same comedians tour since 1999. I love all of them. Hell yeah. For but sure. They ain't going to give us a spot. I'm not talking about the comedians, the game. So we got to take our spot. The game ain't going to give it to us. We, we got to take, take that it. shit. And the only way we're going to be able to get into this rotation where y'all can see us on the regular is if y'all pay to come see us. So Hell support yeah. the cause, man. Absolutely. Support us, man. We yep, here, yep. man. Shoot, man, we've been on this uh, internet since what? I I got on 2009. Same here. Yep. I got a YouTube page in 06, but I didn't start creating content to 2009. I got a video that's been up online since 2000. No, that's not true. I shot it in 2000, and I put it up in 08. Some shit like that. 05. Bad, bro. It's all Damn. Good. Go ahead. Bro. Nah. I've been doing this shit for Since so long, 2000? Bro. I shot it in 2000. The, the timestamp is at the bottom right. Yeah. I was I was a freshman in college, homie. Right, right. And then uh, uh, I shot a sketch. It was terrible, but it was fun. And I ain't never taken it down. Fuck it. I'm saying. Uh, but I shot it in 2000. I, was, I think I put it up on YouTube when YouTube first hit, like around 2007, I think, maybe. When did 2000? A YouTube hit what? 05, 06? 04, 05. I yeah. was a. Kimbo Slice brought me to YouTube. For real? Kimbo Slice and. Uh, basketball mixtapes. Backs yeah, yeah. I didn't even know. I, this is how yeah. green I was. I didn't know that I could upload videos to YouTube. That's fine. I didn't even question who are all these different motherfuckers uploading shit. I just thought it you was TV. It. It, 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 <laughs> right, you know what I'm saying? I, I viewed it like TV. You're right. Yeah. You never watched TV and was like, man, how can I get my own show on this month? Never. <laughs> so yeah. I, I didn't know. I, I didn't realize until I started hanging with you. Really, that's crazy. And that man, I didn't realize until I started hanging with you that somebody made these videos on their own and put them up. I just, I just, everything was through. Nigga, the I used to record shit with the homies and then just have it. And we right. watched it at ourselves. We watched it at our houses by ourselves, yeah. laughing at the shit, not knowing you could put that shit up for like public consumption. consumption. Yeah. And, and, and the first year, I was like, not mad, but I'm like, when I start seeing all these hoop highlights, I'm like, dang, man. I wish this was in my era because my yeah. highlight tape was crazy. Yeah, nigga. So what you could do now, if let's say your career is over as far as basketball, but you still be hooping, you still be training and shit like that. You put up an old mixtape or, 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 or you make your own mixtape, your own highlight reel, and then let, let's say it go viral. Companies will come out and pay you to do the same shit again. Yeah. You can, you can become a social, you can make your own self a social media public figure, bro. Right, right, definitely. Now, so... Now the the problem is there's a lot of niggas doing that shit down, and everybody yeah. ain't worthy of it, but everybody can do it. So that's the problem. Yeah. But if you but if you happen to be able to to, uh, to weed through all the bullshit and, be, and make your name and make your brand, you can be successful doing this shit, man. For sure, a hundred percent. I mean, everything is oversaturated. Facts. Nothing new under the sun. If you're gonna sell dope, it's a million niggas selling dope. Super. If you're gonna strip, ladies, there's a million pussies that have already touched the pole. Right. If you're gonna play football, there's a hundred people on each team. A hundred niggas. And there's thousands of schools. Right. If you're gonna be a Christian, there's churches with thousands of people. Yes. And there's 
thousands of churches. Yeah. Every corner. What, hey, what can you, what AD or Craig, what do you think you can can, can do that ain't never been done before? If you really be, think yeah. hard enough and be like, uh, think real, real hard, man. Were and, you original? Uh, huh? Were it something original? Yeah. That's me an outfit. Hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> What's the shit you made, nigga? Oh, I, I, I had a, uh, I had a pocket neck turtleneck. A pocket a neck turtleneck, turtleneck is hilarious. With a pocket on it. Why hey, not? Because a turtleneck got a lot of space. It, right. All it is is this fabric around the neck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of space to push it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know what I was thinking about? Why do we put pockets on the outside of shit? I don't want people to know I got certain shit on me. Why don't right. they hide pockets? Because if you see a pocket, you're not gonna thing, rob uh -oh. a nigga that ain't got no pocket. And nigga, if you walk up to it, I ain't never seen a nigga in sweats get robbed. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, nigga. Pockets <laughs> are the reason for robberies. If you look at a nigga and you it, he can, and you can't tell if he got something on him, you're gonna walk to the next man. You're gonna be like, this nigga got pockets. He probably got something in the motherfuckers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and usually it's probably something of importance. Hey, yeah, here's the thing: if a nigga walking around, would you do this? If you saw a nigga with a pocket, <laughs> I guarantee it's either a wallet in that motherfucker, some right, keys. Right. A key ain't nothing but access to something that's valuable. Right, right. And don't nobody got a key to some bullshit. Right. The you know what I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the key is to something important. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's your whip, whether it's your house, whether it's a safe, whether it's, you know what I'm saying, a locker with some, some shit in it. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 the thing about it is, it has to be a value for you to put it in the pocket. That's what right. I'm saying. You don't put nothing in your pocket. That ain't worth nothing. Right. Imagine robbing a motherfucker. He got a bunch of worthless. <laughs> fuck you, <laughs> hey, <laughs> fuck you got. Fuck this yo yo doing here, yeah, nigga. You think you're 35 years old? You got a yo 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 pocket, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck you doing? <laughs> hey, that's the type uh, of shit I had in my pocket as a kid, nigga. Uh, that's funny. Out of yo yo man. Yo -yo, yo 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 pocket, bro. That's I, crazy. Yo yo, hey, bro. I had yo yo. I'm gonna keep it a hundred, nigga. If, if I'm nine years old. And niggas dump me upside down, you're gonna see like about 45 beans fall out of my pocket. The candy beans, the baked beans? Nah, real beans. Nigga. Why? What you doing with beans? I had a bean shooter, nigga. Oh, oh yeah. You I had was an ammo. Old, old mischievous little motherfucker, man. Yeah. I used to fuck niggas, so I would have a pocket full of beans. Yeah, <laughs> nigga, be, be like sitting little, in the bushes, hitting nigga, people driving by. Fucking niggas like, feet. Hey, beep, the beep. bush, the bushes was everything as a kid. For a little nigga, you the make. bushes is yo. Because we was from the hood, we didn't yeah. have no clubhouse. No, we had bushes. We had nigga. bushes, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Sit your ass in some in some sticky ass bushes, nigga. Man, so who was your pea to shooter to made out, out of? of shit. You said who was the actual pea shooter? Mine yeah. was the top of a milk carton. Yes, nigga. And a and a fucking uh balloon. balloon. A balloon and a gang of motherfucking yeah. rubber bands. You make a nigga bleed with that paw. <laughs> Man, yeah, 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 nigga. Break the skin. <laughs> hey, 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 you can you can you can punk a nigga for his bag of french fries, nigga, with a bean shooter. Hey man. Hey nigga, I'm gonna fuck you up. You too close, man. Back up, nigga. You going <laughs> Nah, nigga, give me your fries, bro. Yeah, Ooh. Give me your, give me your hey, fries. right there on Vernon, nigga. Heinz Heinz a uh, burger span, burger stop. Had a uh, you can get a, a bag of fries for a dollar, nigga. A dollar, a big ass bag of fries. Yeah, like, here we got a place called Tops. It's bro. two of them. Is you it? get a whole box of fries, basically. Damn, nigga. What was it? What was it? Watch. Hawkins, Yo, Hawkins, nigga. Hawkins. Yeah. Hey, it's, it's shit. It's, it's you gonna right get now. shot before you get to Hawkins. Getting them, bro. getting them pastrami fries. Yeah. You, you well, we had, do? but before Hawkins, let me jump on here. But before Hawkins, we had Stops. Stops had the barbecue pastrami's that was incredible. Mm. And niggas used to drive all the way from the west side. Um, Cuz it started on Central. So yeah. when they started when they built the freeway, they moved it on Imperial. Right. Uh -huh. So they moved the whole location. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But bro, that's the most dangerous shit in the world. Yeah, you got to got to I don't think nobody should be that hungry. Nah. <laughs> nah you got to here's the thing. You when you when you, meet, when you got a relative just from Watts you gotta let him know. Ask him in advance. Hey, you gonna be at the crib? Yeah. Hey, meet me at Hawkins, my yeah, nigga. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Meet me there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he he'll get there. Nigga start looking. No, 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 no. This, this, this is my relative. My nigga, be good. Oh, all right then. All right, nigga. Yeah. Watch is like a public level four yard. <laughs> nigga. <laughs> Facts. Facts. Yeah, nigga. Ah! <laughs> yes, nigga. <laughs> Woo! Bro, watch is that dangerous. Where that's a great way of putting it, nigga. Yeah, I mean, you got it. Niggas and watch, they got different. 
I, pause. I got a different throat where they could recognize a Watts octave in, <laughs> in your voice. Came from Watts. I, it's an accent. And they own you. Like it's an accent, it, nigga. <laughs> I used to get from here. You know where you at, nigga? <laughs> Second blood, <laughs> nigga. Hey, 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 hey. Now, City uh, of uh, Commerce, way over there, blood. Yeah, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He said that's yeah, three yeah, minutes. Yeah. What do you mean, <laughs> way <laughs> over there? Not even that far, nigga. Fuck you, mean, nigga. The Watts is different, man. Way over there. The east side yeah. of Detroit is just like Watts, which Watts is Ooh, the east side yeah. of LA. Or yeah, this is on. On thing. This is on shit. What yeah. you got for us today, Craig? Man, a whole bunch of stuff, man. So check it out. Um, Amazon is making a play for the NBA. They trying to monopolize oh, all the shit. sports. Look, they gave the NFL a billion dollars, and right now their contract is up for renegotiation. Um, they gave them a billion dollars, and weekly the NFL has been getting about thirteen point six million viewers per week, which is incredible. Wow. Um, just based on those numbers. Uh, the NFL is looking to get about fifty to seventy, a uh, fifty to seventy-five billion dollar deal uh, from twenty twenty-five to twenty twenty-six, which is incredible. But um, just imagine the kind of money the NBA is going to get because they have more games, more, more games, opportunities, niggas. and the NBA is a global game. So if the NFL is is trying to get fifty to seventy-five billion, imagine what the in, in, uh, NBA. NBA is going to be asking for. NBA, that's crazy. And, and, and the language in this article I read, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver openly expressed his fascination with Amazon Prime's presentation. He's fascinated. Hey, you, but you know what? I think it's, an it's, awe. Not, um, it's not a great production. Right. I, you know, even when I watch the NFL on Prime, I don't think that's going to be successful uh, for the NBA. The NBA needs colorful characters, announcers, and I don't think they have that with Prime unless they can peel somebody from the regular, um, right? You know, the broadcast. But it's, it's not appealing, actually. Oh, well, so you've seen it? You saying you've seen the games being presented on Amazon Prime, and they got a whole new anchor crew. Well, what like they the commentators foot, and shit. So for football, they grabbed um, Troy Aikman and um, Joe Buck. So oh. you know they they you know they cookie cutter. So it's no action. So when you, li they, when you they, watch they, the Thursday night game, it's not really, um, it's not live to Chris me. Berman? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Here's the thing, man. That's crazy. Snoop Dogg is an innovator, right? Uh huh. When he did the whole thing with Triller, that is to me the new wave of watching sporting events with commentary. Have comedians, rappers, people who have real personality. And who aren't scared to give real opinions. Right. Because I feel like everything has evolved to more organic interactions except uh, sporting commentary. It's still yeah. very generic. Right. And then a lot of times I really don't enjoy the opinions of the ex-athletes that they have commentating on, yeah. like, on the events because it, it's too much ego. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it, it's too biased. Yeah. Right. And yeah. It, Why not have us on there? It's, it's certainly right. biased based upon the fraternity that they play for. So if right. I play for the Eagles, I hate the Cowboys. So right. I'm going to talk right. anything about the Cowboys. I'm going to talk madness. And, and and I always refer back to Kobe because, in my opinion, Kobe, I watched him. To me, in my generation, he was the most hated on athlete that still sure. performed despite his critics. Support. Sure. Most people would have folded to the critics, but a lot Absolutely. of the older players – were mad that Kobe was outspoken about trying to be better than Jordan, and he really gave it an honest, solid, respectful shot right. to put himself in the conversation. But when he started to become that player, in the beginning, it was a lot of hate. A lot of hate from Charles Barkley, yeah. a lot of like, from his boy Shaq. Not necessarily hate from Shaq, but, you know, Stuff that, that was ended. That, that was it. Still, it stood from the personal beef they had. But a lot of the older players. I don't know if your point of view on this eighty, but a lot of the eighties and nineties players had a lot of negative stuff to say about him being a ball hog, yeah. not passing. Should you know, be what too mean? much like Jordan. When, 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 when at that time, that's what we wanted to see. Right. My well, generation wanted to see somebody dare to go at Jordan's legacy and be as right. great as he was. Exactly. Go ahead, eighty. But again, now we're talking about franchises. So if you hated the Lakers, why would you be a Kobe fan? Right. Why would you want to see Kobe do do the, well? The, 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 and, yeah, the, the, you know what I'm greater, saying. Yeah. Right. I, but I don't have a problem with that. I'm talking about the commentary, the ex players, and they say jaded because they in the same lane as this dude. How does dude get more out of something that I got out of it when I did it before him? 
Right. It was a lot of that hate and you know what I mean? Well, it, it, well, this is the thing too though. If Kobe would have went to Charlotte where he was supposed to, he wouldn't be Kobe Bryant. You don't think so? Don't, Hell no. I don't agree. Oh, you tripping. I don't agree. He'd you, be the, the, the franchise set you up to be a winner, bro. But here's the thing. Kobe, so say he don't go to Charlotte. At his very minimum, he would have been a Kevin Durant type player. And yes. Kevin, At listen, very, listen, minimum. listen. Kevin Durant without the Warriors is Carmelo Anthony. Right, that's what Facts. I'm saying. But at his very minimum, he would have been a Kevin Durant. But the, uh, you're right. The organization means everything. So what, what happens if he, he would have went to your team, the Knicks? What, what would have happened? He would have been a monster. Because the market in New York, regardless of what you say or, the, or if we like the, the Knicks the, yeah. or not, the market alone is the top market. They're the most expensive NBA franchise. I agree, 100%. So why well, no, no, would, not no more. Not no more. Who? The the uh, the Warriors are worth no, eight not. billion now. Go 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 look. Let's bring up the. They list. cannot fuck with the Knicks, bro. I think the Knicks is number three now. I guarantee you they not. But hey, but here's the thing: the Knicks, the Knicks over the last uh, since the beginning of the time, especially over the last twenty years, they've had great players. They've had Allen Houston. They've had key Kobe Bryant esque players that they couldn't get it done with. Uh. That's the, and, and, and I'm not shitting on the Knicks. I'm just saying. Like, oh, I, shit. I told you. I just looked at this list about three months ago. I always assumed the Knicks were number one because that's the center of commerce for the entire world. But the Steph Curry blow up is crazy. Wow. Six billion. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. I, that's why I, was like, I, I know this. Yeah. I was like, man, that's crazy. Ooh, that's, but, a, that's a hundred billion more. But check this out. So it was right before Steph Curry got to the league. Somebody bought the team for like seven, eight hundred million. So Steph Hur yeah. Steph Curry took the team from seven eight hundred million to billion. almost eight billion, bro. That's crazy, bro. That's, that's why you got to put him over Magic. Hey, that's Craig facts. Now, 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 now I'm gonna tell you <laughs> something right now. So sure. you you tripping on that Magic Johnson? Uh -oh. That's my favorite player of all time. But I'm saying, but what Steph Curry did the most with the least amount of talent? No, he didn't. No, who look? No, Magic no. Johnson is a god. He's a player that will never come off the Mount Rushmore hoopers. But he's six nine, fast as a gazelle, best passer ever. Three feet. He's supposed to be who he is. Right. Steph Curry is six three. There's a million niggas as athletic and as fast as he is, and he was able to do that. And not stand out from the crowd athletically. He did it with just pure if you, will if you and take, skill. If you take all six three, let's say every single six foot three basketball player in, in the NBA, I'm capable. I'm just as when I was you put hooping, him in a, you I was just as capable. I was just a, as capable as he is. Indeed, and, and you put him in a a, a, a a course, a physical prowess course, speed, agility, height, uh, quickness, uh, jumping ability, all not shooting, not shooting. He's going. He's going to probably grade out in the top middle, right? Which isn't good. In right. your era, Steph Curry is not drafted. John Wall's beating that nigga. D Wade, the uh, uh, D Rose, right? Um, uh, John Morant. Every player in the last thirty six foot years. Three niggas. Every player in the last lower? thirty-five years. I'll go back to nineteen eighty-two. Physical talent. Physical gift. Every player except Larry Bird is more athletic than Steph Curry that's been an NBA All-Star. One thing that I'm going to say, and, I, and I'll let you guys battle in between yourself, <laughs> if you take the three-pointer away from Curry, he's not effective. Uh, uh, now, sure. okay, right? For right. Sure. Yeah, for sure. What can you take away from Magic that would make him not effective? Passing. He can score. He can, but he's not a first. He's not the best. Uh, he can get to the basket. He can, but what I'm saying, without passing, Magic is not the best point guard to ever play basketball. Ooh. So how how was Steph when he, you know, would, would, if Ma you take the three away from Steph, he, he's not a threat to pass. I mean, we're we not, we not defending the, 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 the pass. Without the three, he's still 20 and 10. He's, you crazy. Yeah, he's still 20 oh, and 10. Oh, you crazy. Oh, let me cut back to y'all. You crazy. <laughs> look, this look, he's out, out, out the combo. He's still the best shooter ever without the three point line. We, he is. True. He is. He but is the best shooter ever. Three answer. compared to two is totally different. Yeah, but see, Steph Curry in his prime is 30 and eight. Take away the three, so that's so 15 and eight. I say 20 because you, you got the free throw line. 
Okay. You got what? and one. You know, Magic I mean? did that without a three. No, no, Magic is cold. It, it's damn near impossible to argue against Magic, but I mean, to me, without the hey, passing, he's a power. I'm gonna four. tell you this right now. I'm gonna tell you the 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 the, 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 the underlying factor. Let Steph Curry catch AIDS and let's see what how. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, yo, yo, what, uh, Bushy, this is a good ass topic though. Yeah. yeah. Without without uh, uh if you take it, what can you take away from Magic? One thing, and he won't be as effective. You take Steph's three point. You take Magic's pass, and Steph is better than Magic. No way. Ooh. No way. He can't even out rebound him. He can't. He can't defend nobody. Who he gonna stick? There you go. Who Magic gonna stick? Niggas act like Magic was picking point guards what up if, full court. What if he comparing them to the defense of of Steph Curry? Yeah. The Eighties is the worst era for no. guard play. There's only I, look. I'm gonna say something. You might yell at me for this, but if you go to the '80s era, there's probably only 25 to 30 guards that are good enough in that era to play in the NBA now. The entire Pistons team, except Isaiah, would not make it to the NBA in this era. You don't think Joe Dumas? The entire Rockets team with Elijah one, except Ralph Sampson, would not make it to the NBA. Vernon Maxwell is not making it to the N N NBA in this what? era. No, you it's crazy. Not. Um. Uh, Mad else? Max is gonna make it, nigga. Anybody he a, that he played with three, Sidney hey, Moncrief is not Max making it to the league <laughs> in this era. Max is a three and D nigga. Alex English is the last man on the bench <laughs> in this era. Come on, big bro. <laughs> Alex English don't make the t don't make the team, bro. He, Ninety five yeah. percent of the NBA that played in the eighties is not making the uh, league. I say seventy percent of the NBA from the nineties ain't making it to the league. Maybe 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 uh maybe higher than that. From the nineties? From the nineties. Look, man, you got Jordan. Look, let's go to the two guard position. You got Jordan. You got Clyde Drexler from the nineties. You got Mitch Richmond, Reggie Miller. Them is the only two guards that's making it to the NBA in this era. I might be missing two or three. Eddie Jones probably makes it. Iverson? Iverson, John, yeah, John but Star? Iverson. No Who? John Star? No. <laughs> he barely made it in that era. <laughs> He barely beat being a grocery bagger in the 90s. Bro, in the 90s, Bo Outlaw made the league. He has zero skills. You said John Popeye Stockton. Jones made the league. He has zero skills. <laughs> Nigga, uh, Tyrone uh, uh, Hill? Uh, who? Tyrone Hill. <laughs> Tyrone Hill. Come on, dog. AC Green. Zero. Come on, dog. AC Green not making it in the league, nigga? Bro, is AC Green making it in this era? No. Absolutely not. Most of them 90s players were doo-doo. Look, they were big. I'm not saying they didn't have the ability to be as good as the players now, but these little niggas now are incredible, dog. We, look, I was we was I was talking to AD. We two totally different generations in hoop. He 10, 10 years older than me. I'm 2000, what, 89? 90. 90. We didn't have trainers. No. Nah. Nigga, I learned at the park getting muscled up by grown men. I know niggas 13 with a nutritionist and a trainer and a hoop schedule. I done had no hoop schedule, nigga. I dribbled my ball to school. Yeah. We practiced. Then after I went home, then we went to the park about five or six when all the grown men got off and they wanted to get away from their wives. And we played from maybe 6, 6.30 to 9.30, 10 at night. Then I went home, took a shower, went to bed. That's how I worked on my game. Hey, hey, hey real keep quick. this though. I I'm sorry, Ja. Go ahead, Let me, go ahead. I'm going to shoot this and I'm done. Go ahead. They have a machine that'll get you the ball back after you shoot. How many more shots could you get up if you had that in high school? And that's your little brother throwing you the ball. You know what I'm saying? Like going out right. What you say, Ja? I'm gonna pull up a roster. Give me any team from the early '90s. Uh, the San Antonio Spurs. Oh, this gonna be easy. <laughs> This gonna be easy, Bowen. Right yeah, this gonna be easy. Oh, yeah, this is gonna be real quick. Nice. Hey, Ad, do you remember uh, the uh, football quarterback? I mean, a football quarterback, a, a college quarterback by Ortiz Jenkins. Yeah, I knew Ortiz. He went to Arizona. The Arizona from Linwood. Yeah. You, uh, no, I, Ortiz is from uh, uh, Ortiz. Is I know he, he went. He might be from, from Compton, but I think I think he went to. His high school might have been Long Beach Wilson or was it yeah, well, well, yeah, he must be a he a, he a uh, Long Beach nigga, but he went to but Arizona. He was nice. Nice as fuck, right? Okay. He my boy's son's coach, quarterback coach. He been quarterback he been coaching. He's 14 now. 
He been court uh, coaching this nigga for about yes. ten years. Yeah, since he's since he's about five six. Yeah, so not not ten years. So about what seven eight years. Yeah, the nigga is the starting quarterback for Newport Harbor, and he's killing. 14. He a, he a sophomore. He a starter. And he got a hell of a ball, hell of Ooh, a deep ball. He balls. got a cannon, but he got a coach. Shout out He's, to his pops. No, yeah, shout out to my nigga Jaren, man, my brother. Uh, but Come the do boy, the show, nigga. He he he's so nice. He's so polished at at tenth grade. But Ortiz Jenkins been working with this dude since before he was in middle school. Right. Well, we got some deeper. You 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 probably don't even know because you're too young. Um, my rally is uh, they doing a documentary on Jamel Holloway. Hmm. If you Google Jamel, he's the first option quarterback. The nigga was at Oklahoma wearing minks with Barry Switzer. He's okay. the first nigga to start fucking white girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack Johnson in his grave. Turn it over. Like, nigga, they been, you ever heard of the man act? Nigga, that's me. Nigga, I'm, but check this out. The roster from the 1990 Spurs. Ooh. The talented 1990. So there's three players on this list who are monsters in any era. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's about it's, it's about five on there. About five. About five. Yeah. Who the fuck is Willie Anderson? <laughs> hey, that's Flipper, nigga out of Georgia. Uh, okay. All right, cool. But uh, I don't know who he is. I, you know. No, he, he he. So that's Willie Flipper Anderson. Uh, I don't even know if they call him Flipper because the other nigga played for the Rams. But he was a uh, he was a Stacy Augman type nigga. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, defensive stopper. Yeah. Long pause. Yeah. Okay, cool. Terry Cummings makes it in any era. He's yes. not the most skilled, but he's a fucking monster. He's a right. beast. Yeah, so he's he the guy, he the first nigga with alopecia. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Who the fuck is Byron Dinkins? Uh he's the uh yeah, he he don't even make the squad. And that nigga was born in 67. That's what I'm saying, man. Terry Cummings, damn. Sean Elliott was a yes. monster. He's Sean a monster. Elliott. University of Arizona. Sidney Green. I don't know. Born in '61, jumper off. No, <laughs> not no mid range. Or the UNLV. He was yeah, but he was a utility type nigga. Okay, one player we both know. Watch legend David Greenwood makes he, it in any era. He makes it in any era. Sean Higgins makes it in any era. That's a LA native too. He was a monster. He is the reason yeah. I wore twenty four in high school. He was supposed to be. He was like a Magic Johnson type player, right? Remember his dad wanted him to go to Michigan, and he was going wanted him to go to UCLA because he had took that money. Dang. And, uh, he was going to beat him with the baseball bat. Avery Johnson does not make it in in, in this era. Oh no, he doesn't. Doesn't huh? The Admiral. Yeah. <laughs> he don't Admiral. make it in this era. Clifford Lett. Hell no. Who is that? I don't know. Tony Massenburg. He was trash with the Clippers. He'd be trash in this era. <laughs> trash. Pete trash. Myers. Garbage. <laughs> oh, no. Pete had some. Pete was a. Pete was a. A uh, 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 Ron Harper type of nigga. Okay. I don't Still know. Still don't make it. <laughs> Paul Pressey was nice, right? Uh, Won't make it. Won't make it. Couldn't put. The, he a shooting guard with no handles. This nigga, Dwayne Shitteris. How do you say that nigga's name? That's Schnitzis. He's that Schnitzis. Schnitzis. He's Schnitteris. He's a big white boy. <laughs> Call him Shitteris. <laughs> nigga last name is Shitteris. That's crazy. Ooh. Schnitzis. Uh, he's a he's a big he's he's a nigga that everybody dunked on. Rod Strickland makes it in any era. Any of era. Course. Easy work. I don't know Reg. Uh, is this Reggie Williams, L.A. native Reggie Williams? No, no this okay. the one out of Georgetown. I don't, I don't know what where he was from, but he was, he was nice. And then this last dude, David, uh, David Wingate. Both of them niggas was at. They, they both would have made it. Okay. Yeah. That's 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 a lot more than seven. That's a lot more than seven. That's like so that's about sixty percent of the roster. Seventy yeah. percent of the roster. Yeah. That ain't bad. The eighties is way worse. I give me another team in the comments. Somebody said the Atlanta Hawks at nineteen ninety. Ooh. Oh, they only gonna have four. I don't, ooh, they might have, yeah. I know Dominique right off the back. Dominique, Stacy, uh, Tree uh -huh. Rollins. Uh, let me see. That nigga said that. Ooh, somebody vicious. Them niggas don't have nothing. I was going to say the Clippers. The Clippers? All right, you want to do the Clippers? I say the Clippers. Do the Clippers. We'll do the Clippers. Yeah. The 1990 Clippers roster? They had a trash. Yeah. Damn. That 1990s Clipper roster. I, I'm saying that four max. Four max. They finished sixth. 
Oh, okay. oh no. Who the fuck is Cedric Ball? <laughs> in, in, LeVar cousin? No. 1990s Clipper roster. Y'all look it up. How many of these cats would have made it to the league? Please comment. Woo. They got my homie on there, and he was suspect. Ken uh, Bannister. Who, who was let that? Let me ask you this. Trash. Let me ask you this. Because we don't oh, know who on. they are, does it mean they're not a good player? Or is it, are they just not going to be good enough to start or get some playing time? No, we, we just. Because this, nigga, this nigga's on the bench right now in the NBA that ain't played in four games. Right. Yeah, and they better than these niggas, though. Okay. Tom Noy Garrett. Benjamin, he a seven-footer, possibly makes Yeah, seven-footer, yeah. He, well, my, my cousin them robbed that nigga on uh, Prairie, <laughs> and uh, he had the convertible 560, and they reached in there and robbed him. Oh, he let, they reached into the convertible. Yeah, they Ooh. man, that's fucked up when you get robbed with your with your with hey, the top drop. Hey, my cousin got robbed. I mean, my cousin, my brother on the Shaw. Yeah, on the Sunday back in the day, back in the days, nigga, it was, it was in the bug, and my brother was reaching for the shit, and he let like, nah, not We was, we was, yeah. They, 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 they had to pull out radios. You just go in there and take the little handle and put a radio. Yeah, on. yeah. The Alpines. Hey, hey. They, they just come off the the radio, my nigga. No, don't lose your life, bro. Just. Yeah, I just had this. Craig worked with a nigga that looked like the nigga from a uh, 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 Minister Society. Who? The nigga that the, the the cousin that got shot in the car. Kane, <laughs> Kane, get out the car, Kane. Who's that nigga, Craig? I'm trying to think. Where, where where did we work at? The nigga you gonna be doing the shows with Friday? Uh, damn. I'm trying. What's to his name? Steph or something? Oh, Steph. Yeah. yeah. Steph looked like Harold, right? Yeah. That's hilarious. Hi, uh, Tom Garrick. I don't know who the fuck that is. <laughs> uh, Gary Grant, he's not making the league. <laughs> Ron Harper's making the league. Yep, for sure. Bo he, Kimble, and that's my guy. That was my teammate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bo ain't make Danny Manning. Yeah, Bo not making the league. Danny Manning's making the league. Jeff Martin, I don't even know who that is. Nah. Over them Polynes, I mean, he's he was a big that was durable. He would have made the league. Yeah, because the bigs right now ain't the best. All the bigs. There's, there's some marquee bigs in the league, but not Charles like, Smith. Charles Smith. I don't it, wait, wait, that's the he played for the Knicks too, yeah, right? Yeah. He's not making the league. <laughs> Charles Hook, the, 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 the play for the uh for the Hawks? Yeah, he, played, he for the, played for the Hawks. Yeah, he didn't have no game. He was just like a Yeah. Niggas niggas his size is dribbling off the dribble and crossing niggas up. He didn't have none of that type of ability. Who was Mike Schmerick? Mike Schmerick. He played for the Lakers too. Big white boy, just a poster nigga. And then mm -hmm. Lloyd Vaught, ah, that's that's iffy because Lloyd was good. Yeah, he had a mid range too. Lloyd did. I think he makes the league in this era if he plays the three. And if he got to play the three, he not making it. Somebody said y'all some trash GMs. <laughs> How much <I> trash? <laughs> How much a trash GM? Because they say, <laughs> damn nigga, at least let these niggas work out. Can they work out and try it? These dudes ain't making the league, man. <laughs> The NBA, it was. I mean, look, man. Back then, you just if you if you were tall and you worked hard, you had a hell of a shot. You know what I'm saying? Pretty much, if you were seven feet, you was guaranteed to go to the league. Now, in this era, you can look up the stat: twenty percent of people who are seven feet tall playing the NBA in the whole world. Last roster, go to your Lakers, Craig. Let's do Lakers 1990 because they were okay. They were they were a playoff team. That's the year before, two years before they made their last. Yeah, they were still okay. That's the year after Kareem retired, right? Magic was hurt that season, right? Is that the, uh, that's the AIDS season, right? No, that was 91. 91. Yeah, we could Magic was on, the yeah, AC Green was dookie, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. I was going to say, you know. Tony Brown's not making the league. I'm sorry. Ah. Tony Brown's not making the league. Eldon Campbell makes the league. Vlade Divac makes the league. Larry Drew's not making the league. So that's, wait, so that's one, two. That's two so far. Vlade Divac makes it. Larry Drew doesn't. AC Green doesn't. That's Magic three. Johnson does. Sam Perkin does. Yeah. yeah. Byron Scott does. So so this is, let me, let me explain this to you. Sleepy Sam was the first Big to shoot threes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, he was a lucky He makes guy. it. Byron Scott makes it. Yes. Tony Smith doesn't make it. Uh, he's a, a trainer. Terry, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's the head coach on the travel ball team for his son that'll probably be. 
Terry Teagle, no. Who is Irving Thomas? Irving Thomas, based on that, nope. He went to Kentucky and Florida State. M- Michael Thompson? Yes. Yes. Yeah. James Worthy, yes. Yes. Okay, so that's what, seven? But to me, in this era, James Worthy probably would be, he, he, I think he played a two because of how good his feet were. Yeah. I don't think he would have been a pick and roll player or isolation four. I think he would have been a three and a two, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, so all I have to say, man, this era is crazy, man. That last, the, the 90s era was, regards, was trash. Yeah. Next topic. Jay Z was asked about what's been circulating on the internet in for about a year or two now. A few it's been years. a year or two where people were saying, "Look, you either take five hundred k or a dinner with Jay Z." Ho, Ho said, "Man, you better take that five hundred k, man." He finally put the debate to rest. Like I'm tired of hearing about it. Let me say this. Let me say this. Take the damn five hundred thousand. Yeah, don't worry Be about smart. no with me. Right. If here's the thing. In this day and age, if you have five hundred thousand liquid cash capital, and you can't make it with that, right. shoot yourself. Shoot yourself. Five hundred thousand dollars. You should be able to in the next within five years. You should be crazy paid. Oh my god! In five years, really three. If you know what you're doing, I agree. Yeah, five hundred cash. Look, what, this is what you got to realize about liquid money or liquidity. There are people worth millions who aren't liquid for five hundred k. No, but when you see somebody's net worth, that's the that's the estimated worth of them if they sold everything that they own on record. Mm-hmm. So they most people would have to sell assets to get five hundred k. So if you have five hundred k from that five hundred k, you, you should be able to leverage five mil. Facts. You know what I'm saying? You should be able to leverage five mil. Yeah. You know, but uh, the broke mind state, we want to hold on to bread. Uh-huh. And, you know, so that's not how these motherfuckers think. They use money as leverage to attain assets that appreciate and gain value. Mm-hmm. Broke people get money and buy shit that loses value. Right. Yeah. Shoes. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a victim of that. Me Shoes. Too. Me and too. We always worried about having a haircut and. You know, that's just part of just growing up not having shit. We think fresh is something different. We finally can be fresh. Right. You know, I got all the shit that I didn't have before. Exactly. It's me. The shit I wanted when I was 12, I got all that shit now. <laughs> yeah. I'm grown as fuck with, with 12-year-old aspirations. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a closet well, full of 12-year-old Well, a lot shit. of times with, with money, we don't understand it. We don't understand how it works. We right. just know how to spend it. We understand how it works as far as spending. So um, as far as leveraging the money that you have to establish credit so you don't have to use your money, we've never been taught that. So if we can get taught that, then you don't have to spend your money if you got cool credit, right? 100%. You know what's even crazier? These motherfucking economists are so genius. You know, they've attached emotionality to having money, so you even feel better when you got a pocket full of money. Mm -hmm. Ain't that crazy? It is. You feel like you that nigga when you know you're sitting on a few hundred racks or you got extra bread. Like you, 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 you don't have a worry in the you world. Know, you, yeah, yeah. You don't trip. You become a, a, a easy heavy tipper. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? You become yeah. You know. You don't got a care in the world when you when you on top of that with the, with the bread. Man, take that 500k, man, because that Jay Z dinner could go wrong. Right. You know, what if it's you, not guaranteed that you get the gems that you need. What if he it's just a dinner? And yeah. He might be like, "Hey, nigga, so what kind of what, 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 what Jay Z asked you, Yo, Craig, man? So who's your team? Right. <laughs> nah, nigga, I want to talk about some money making. Ah, no, 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 nigga. What if he grab your girl ass? <laughs> what if he disrespect you at the dinner? What if what if the nigga ain't hungry? The nigga reach over and, and take a piece of your steak. <laughs> <laughs> That's real shit. It's the dinner, nigga. What if you, he you allergic the, to everything in the restaurant? All the food. I'm allergic to everything <laughs> that they serve. Right. What if he already been to the restaurant and had a bad uh, experience? experience? <laughs> right. Right. What if he owns a restaurant and this is his competition? Right. Man, you don't want to risk that, man. Take the money. Because a, a dinner ain't guaranteed. You can have a dinner with that nigga, and you can get the gems or not get them. It's not guaranteed. That five hundred thousand in your pocket, in your in your bank account, it's real, nigga. Or in right. a duffel bag, that's really yours. Right. Guaranteed. What if he give you some advice though, and you don't have the production to put that into play? Right. What if now he you, get? Hey, you need. You know, I got a I got a great plan, but you need two hundred and fifty k. Right. 
Jay, the only thing at that dinner that's gonna be worthwhile is the Jay Z's gonna tell you some dope shit, but he gonna he also gonna tell you you need the money to do this dope shit. I'm telling you. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? And then look, man, Jay are already has innovated in a way relative to his era. So, to in my opinion, Jay Z no longer has to be an innovator. He has to recognize innovation. So you got to take that money in order to be able to manifest whatever it is you want him to fuck with. And right. then you're not really doing good business. You shouldn't even be in front of a dude like this unless what you're doing, your as far as the reputation you gain from creating, beats you to him. If you sit in, J- in front of Jay-Z with no resume and no reputation. Just an eager dinner that you want to have with him. You're just another broke nigga trying to be in his good graces. That right. it ain't gonna work out for you, right? It ain't gonna work out for you. Hey, man, I got reasonable doubt, reasonable doubt too. I made it. And look, man, this is a tribute album to your <laughs> album. Hey, how much you, brother? Nobody's ever done this, Jigga. <laughs> it's a tribute album to your album. Yeah, <laughs> you're Jay Hove. I'm Noah. I'm Jay Nova. <laughs> like you just taking, you just remixing all his ideas, right, man. Right, nah, right. get in the pocket, get uncomfortable. You, fail you a whole lot. Veto? I'm mojito. <laughs> <laughs> fail a lot. And after you failed enough to understand how not to fail, after a, a few relationships have uh, went south. South, yep. That's you what, know what you need. Yep. You know what I mean? Because you got to understand how to deal with people who got unrealistic expectations before you get to these bosses. Yeah. Because you have to know how to filter out the bullshit. Right. That's what I went through, just filtering out the bullshit information. You know what I'm saying? Fil- just filtering out the bullshit is a big part of, of becoming a boss. Damn. You come into yeah, a billion yeah. dollar nigga with thousand dollar problems. Right. Somebody, Freddie, said, Peace. I'll spit on Jay Z for 500K. Yeah, oh. you probably would, but you won't live to be able to spend it. <laughs> right. you know I mean, niggas are kill for Jay Z out here, bro. <laughs> why, why are you going to spit on the nigga? Why are you going to spit on a dude that can help you in life? And who's going to give you 500,000 to spit on the person? Better do a little bit more elevator spit on speech the and a business plan to the dinner. Or I'd rather take the money and talk to Master P instead. I mean, all them dudes is good choices to speak to. Uh-huh. But how do you guys know when something is worth investing your money in? Do y'all got like a, a formula of somebody coming a certain way and you got it, you're going to give it to them, or are you just going instinct? Ooh. You say, how do I know when a person's information is, is valuable enough to get 500000 to? Yeah. Damn. Honestly speaking... I don't know if I would. Yeah. I feel like I would take that five hundred thousand and do trial and error. Cause here's the thing: how much was college tuition? Man, you're paying for the knowledge to gain knowledge from a person, right? You, you know what I'm saying? You when you go when you go to school, you in the lecture hall, three hundred people in the lecture hall, listening to one person talk with the with the presentation board in front of the big ass movie screen right. with a presentation to, to tell us shit. Then we go then we go back to our dorms. And read the same books that you told us about. Right. Just to review it and, and, and retain the knowledge as opposed to just getting into the field. Right. I wouldn't say do that with, with medicine and doctor shit. Like, as a surgeon, no, you gotta practice. You gotta pay for that shit as a surgeon. But nigga, like, w- w- what I do as far as filmmaking and even what we do, nigga, like, would you pay, would you pay tuition, which is about for you, go to college to do broad, people major in broadcasting, right? Right. They go to school, major in um, journalism, major in filmmaking, and they paying up to $100,000 plus, uh, you know what I'm saying, to do all that shit. Right. To learn the shit. Or I did that. I paid to go to school to learn how to be a filmmaker. You know what I'm saying? But I know motherfuckers who learned on the streets, learned just by grabbing a camera and figuring it out. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'd, I'd much rather now do that now than to pay all this money, $40,000, $50,000, for the opportunity to learn how to do this shit, I could I could teach myself and learn on the way through other people, you know what I'm saying, reading books on my own. So I don't know if I would I would take that five hundred thousand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Five hundred K all day. What about you, AD? Uh I gotta take the bread, man. Yeah. I mean, I got enough wisdom that where if I had that type of capital, I could make something happen. You know, yeah. Jay Z is gonna give you you know, things from his perspective. And a lot of times we don't work and we don't think the same way JD, Jay-Z does. So it's kind of um, uh, 
a bad plan. I mean, uh, Dominique Wilkins can't teach a nigga how to dunk. No. Right. He can tell you what he did, you know what I'm saying? But he was athletically inclined. Or yeah. Michael Jordan can't tell you how to jump from the free throw line. So, you know, me sitting up talking to Jordan, you know, it, it makes no sense for the lane that I'm in. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, I mean, I take a lunch with a nigga that's in my lane. Yeah. You know, but for 500, I got to take that. I know I got an kids. NBA player that I'm cool with. Love mm -hmm. him. Good dude, man. Right. I sat down with him and I said, hey, man, if you had some money, say you had a couple hundred thousand, what would you do to become a millionaire? You know what he told me? Get a job, work hard at that job, do the best you can at that job, and save all your money. I said, oh, I, then I had to realize, oh, this nigga just good at basketball. That wasn't terrible advice, but that's not how to become no that's fucking safe millionaire. Advice. That means, okay, maybe I can get a million when I'm 70 and I retire. Right. But I don't want to work till I'm 70. Nah, nah. Yeah. I want to be done at 55, right. 50. Right. So that means, what that let me know is, oh, when these dudes get money, they put, they have really smart people around them and they invest their money. Just because a dude is in the NBA or a big time rapper, that don't mean that they know. Now, Jay Z is somebody I feel that knows. Yeah, he's been paying attention. Another person that people sleep on who gave the formula to Jay Z just through his career is Ice Cube. Mm. He was the first rapper I remember really betting on himself. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? There may be, maybe there are other. E40. E40. That's somebody I would want to talk to. Hell because yeah. you're talking about people who built from the ground up the ground from up. nothing. Right. True. You know True. what I'm saying? No labels and shit like that. Like, I would look, Will Smith family, they all doing well financially. But I would only want to talk to Will. Right. I yeah. wouldn't want to talk to the kids or maybe his they, wife. I talked to his wife. Yeah. yeah. I want to talk to somebody who came from nothing financially. Yes. Who knows what it feels like? To get it from the mud. Yeah, because that's hard, man. I'll be having people shooting ideas at me, and I'll be like, damn, only if I had the time to help you cultivate your idea. Right. A lot of times people will get mad because they want you to take, stop what you're doing and spend time. You in the position to really do something big, man. I got a great idea, and you in the position. I'm saying we can we, we, we work together, bro. You know, I got a lot of good ideas I'm working on right now. If you're calling people haters and thinking people don't want you to succeed because you're not getting what you want from that person, you're not ready to be successful. Right. You don't understand enough about manifestation and making something happen for yourself you still think that people owe you something because you've decided to try some new stuff right and you really like them right i've been a fan of you for a long time bro i'm gonna work with you man uh, and fuck with me bro i got i got, I got, I got a, some dope ass ideas i got the script man this is fire as hell better than friday right better than friday better than, better than the wood i'm like come on man yeah come on bro i'm saying man you know what I'm saying? Take a chance, man. Take a chance. Yeah, bro, I'm going to take a chance, but you got to you gotta bring me more than just a script. Right, right, right. What have you done outside of this? You know what I'm saying? Right. For yourself. And hey, that's real, man. <laughs> it's a real spill. Also, man, in other news, Kevin Porter Jr., who I feel like has uh, all-star level talent, was accused last week, we talked about it, of assaulting his girlfriend. His girlfriend has vehemently denied the assault took place. In fact, she's reported that the DA took it upon himself to push a case forward in which she's denied any physical altercation has ever taken place. And so what has happened? Um, Kevin Porter's representation has hired a prosecutor to investigate the DA that has basically ruined Kevin Porter's chances of playing in the NBA this year by furthering and going public with these false allegations. allegations. That's crazy. Manhunt. Man, that's wild, that's man. That's fucked up. That's wild, man. Uh, I don't know how to feel about this. You know, you know, once you start elevating the way Kevin Porter or any NFL or NBA player is elevated, people are going to start lying on you. Right. When you become aware of it is not when it starts. It's, it's, it's probably happened months or years before. People going to lie because there's something they can gain from you. They can gain a, a reputation. They can gain money. They can gain, uh, they can gain all types of things. Anytime you're a person that has something that could change somebody's life, it's going to be a person out there lying on you, saying you're doing stuff you shouldn't do. Uh, my advice to Kevin Porter Jr. is kind of stay strong, bro. Yeah. I mean, you may miss the season this year. You, I mean – I don't know if you're ever playing the NBA again. I mean, this situation. Even with the, even with the, uh, uh, un, like the, this shit is an unjust accusation. I mean, 
Yeah, but there's other things that he's done as far as being difficult to work with. And, right. You know, he was on another team before. So sometimes with these uh, people who do these narcs or these people who, 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 who. They stir up enough trouble to where even if you're innocent, you still not fucking with you. Chad Johnson shouldn't have been at the league that early. And then you got to remember, these motherfuckers are hustlers that do shit like this. So a lot of the, you know, so what they do is they'll put on a false persona and create a whole personality to get information from you to use it against you. Mm. And a lot of times, if you have a track record in doing something that may be a little bit borderline, people will use that information against you as well. So he's kind of already, he could, yeah. to me, already has his back against the wall. You know, I, I don't know if he ever playing the league again. I hope he does, but... I mean, once these sexual assault cases come out, and you're not a gener, he's a generational talent as far as ability, but he hasn't, a ch he hasn't production had a wise, yeah, he hasn't had a chance to produce and fully realize it. So they may have killed his career before it got started. Damn, it's, it's super unfair. Unfortunate, super unfair. Unfortunate, man. It's super unfair, man. Uh, yeah, shout out to Kevin Porter, man. Stay strong, bro. Yeah, you know, but uh, they've hired uh, the person that they've hired. So his lawyer has hired a retired lawyer by the name of Robert Y. Archiller. And he's the person that's gonna hold the DA accountable for what has been done and the misrepresentation of the truth. Right. He was quoted as saying, Bobby, well, the, his lawyer said that Bobby is a former prosecutor and also a law professor. I hired him to conduct an exhaustive investigation to what was done to me, including any violations of laws, ethics rules, violations of my rights, including my privacy rights, and uh, then undertake any all and all actions to protect me and to fix my, protect me and to remedy all harm. Mm -hmm. Man, I hope you win this battle, young brother. Hell yeah, man. It's cold blooded, man. Super. What else we got for y'all today? Oh, uh, we got some NFL and NBA scores. Yeah, yeah. It was man, a great weekend in football, man. Man, it week seven of weekend. eighteen, man. Um, the the game last night, the Sunday night game, was the. The four, well, I think it's the five and one Eagles versus the five and one Dolphins. So it was a, a hell of a game. Supposed to be a great game, but um, the Eagles pulled it out, man. The pulled Eagles that shit off. good. Um, the Dolphins, you know, they strike fast, but the Eagles kind of kept them at bay all night. So the Eagles took that one, uh, 31 17. Um, the Packers and the Broncos, uh, the Broncos won that one, 19 to 17. Uh, that was a battle of two horrible teams, two horrible quarterbacks. So uh, mm -hmm. they they're both uh, not they're fighting for the uh, Caleb Williams sweepstakes. Um, the Chiefs and the Chargers played. Uh, the Chargers always come up short against big teams, and the Chiefs, you know, they got um, the Taylor Swifties with them. Uh, that's a that's a big the thing. Taylor now. Swifties, Taylor Swifties, they the uh, flashes. They they going up, bro. I'm telling you, the the chicks that never watch football, they watching footballs now, and you know they trying to. Um, you know, find them a place on the pack. I mean, on the uh, Chiefs bandwagon. And um, where we at now? You moved it. Um, that's week set. Where we at? God. Uh, Jaguars. You, you said it already? Oh, you up there? Oh, Jaguars and Saints. Yep. Uh, that was that was a battle of uh, uh, two minor teams. So the Jaguars pulled that one out, thirty-one twenty-four. Uh, the Falcons teams. beat the the Buccaneers. Uh, the Raiders again come up short against a, a dude that was playing for Pasadena City College last year, quarterback. Uh, beat the Raiders. I know the yeah. Raiders are they, they're about to kill <laughs> themselves now. Uh, the Browns and the Colts. That was a great game. Um, the Commanders beat uh, lost to the Giants fourteen seven in the battle of the NFC East. Uh, the Lions and the Ravens. Now the Lions uh, were they're talking about the Lions going to the Super Bowl this year. Huh. Um, good. The Ravens whooped that ass. Uh, Lamar Jackson balled out, couple touchdowns, ran uh -huh. for a couple hundred yards. He was balling. Uh, the Patriots actually beat the Bills, and that was a surprise. Um, uh, what's the what's the uh, Patriots coach name? Bill Belichick won his 300th game, so that was good for him. Uh, the Cardinals and the Seahawks. Uh, we not really fans on the West Coast, but the Seahawks pulled that one out, 20 to 10. The Rams and the Steelers. Anybody that comes to LA has more fans than we do here, man. I just think we have too much going on. So the Steelers came in and they beat the Rams, 24 17. Um, again, I said earlier the Swifties. Chiefs beat the Chargers 31-17. So that was a uh, week seven 
uh, in the NFL in the NFL schedule. We got tonight the 49ers versus uh, the Minnesota Vikings, and uh, the Minnesota Vikings they don't have a chance tonight. Um, I think the spread is seven points, and the um, the 49ers will cover that easily, bro. Right. So that was that was it for the NFL this weekend. What did uh, you guys do this weekend, man? Man, shoot, man, this weekend I was chilling, man. Man, I was just a lot of writing, bro. Yeah, just writing. Preparing, I'm writing. honestly preparing for this uh, this movie coming that I'm shooting and uh, that we all gonna be in. Uh, so I'm just fine tuning the script right now. I'm writing, getting ready for the Lesbian Homie Three that's coming back. Okay, okay. I'm ready for that as well. Make yeah. sure y'all watch, man. It's gonna be a hell of a series. Oh yeah. Lesbian Homie, man. I can't wait to start shooting it, man. Yes, sir. Hey, man. We got NBA uh, NBA preseason scores, huh? Yeah, it, it, this this right now is uh you getting to the point where the season starts I think this week or next week uh, I think it starts next week but last night we had the uh, well that was Thursday um, the Clippers and the Nuggets uh, the nu- listen I think the Nuggets are going back to back um, they have the deepest team they beat the Clippers one hundred three to ninety that was Thursday the nineteenth so do we have anything for uh, Sunday, or is that all of the games were Friday? Yeah, I think so. Friday. I think all the games were Friday. Okay. Uh, the Hawks uh, lost to the 76ers. Now, is James Harden going to stay in Philly, or is he know. getting up he, out of there? Because that's he hasn't been to practice or anything like that. So what do you think is going to happen there? Hey, man, let me tell you something. The GM of the, of, of the Sixers, he's been good to James Harden. He's the one that gave him all that money in Houston, right? Yeah. So I think, hey man, your teammate fucked your girl, ex girl had a baby with her. Why do you want to leave the team because of that? Yeah. How many women do you have access to to even be tripping on that? Ego. Yeah, it's more so like he probably you you know the nigga that don't want to break up with his girl because he don't want nobody else to have her, but he don't even like her no more. Right. Those are the type of niggas that lead the team. They don't want to see the fact that my girl uh, chose up on somebody else on my squad. I don't want to be around for that. Right, so right. Nigga, nigga, what, what about the greater good of the team? Right, right, right. They right. can stay for the team. Nigga, everybody didn't smash your girl. Just that one nigga did. Yeah. We've all been through it. We've all smashed common women. You got to be more. Here's the thing. Unless it's like your, your wife. girl you currently with. Here's my, here's my thing. I think it's weird for somebody to purposely chase women that you've already smashed. Like somebody that you know. But if you meet a chick and end up smashing her, I get that. But some dudes intentional are in competition, and they get a, a sense of superiority knowing they smashed your ex-girl or smashing chicks you smash. So I, I, I get that. If you're right. playing games and you're doing it for that reason, I, to me, I don't do it. I understand why cats do it. It's not my cup of tea. Right, me either. But if you're just chasing Oh, she used to fuck with AD. Let me just, let, let me, me get on f- her. Let me see what she's talking about. <laughs> you, that's weird. Super weird. I agree. And me, for me, I would never smash a teammate's ex wife purposely. Ex, yeah. If we on the same team. Right. You know, a lot of dudes play that we ain't really that cool type thing. Nah, you only went to lunch fuck. like yeah. 10 times. I only went to your mama's house 15 times. Man. We ain't that cool. But I don't know, man. I, for me, I don't personally cross it. I don't see something wrong with it. But for me, I don't cross those lines because. In the team chemistry is something that could fuck a team off. Right. Facts. I don't know what I you can't think trust about. you all the way. Yeah, what you think about that, AD? Uh <laughs> everybody got different rules. They everybody do. got different rules. The thing is, it depends on what you discuss as rules. Right. And that's where it goes down to. And if if we not talking, then we not discussing rules. So then it's gonna be a fair play type of situation. Right. So it depends on how thirsty you are. Yeah. And that's the bottom line. Because there's plenty of chicks out here, but why would I follow you or right. Ja? It's it's no reason to. Yeah. First of all, we we all, I think we pretty much have different tastes in women. Yeah. And that's how you pretty much line up your homies. Right. Because you go somewhere and be like, okay, this is your brand, this is my brand, and this is my brand. You know what I'm saying? And that's usually how it go. Now if somebody you was messing with decides to, to choose me at some point, then yeah, you got different. you know, right? I agree. That's different if she choosing, but the but to me being a look, if you my guy, I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. 
If you really my partner, hey, and, bro, you know what? And 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 that's if you my guy. If you're not my guy, that's different. But if you my guy, yeah. I'm gonna say, hey man, Mary, I know y'all used to fuck around a couple years ago. She on my bumper. I'm just letting you know. Hey, oh, that's you, man. That's you. What if it's your guy coming to you? But it's not your guy, right? So meaning you, my boy. And it's a, and a nigga that I know. Passion. Yeah, absolutely. Or you, you know, what I'm saying it, it's done came to you. His girl done came to you. What What do you do in that case? I'm gonna tell my it's, guy. Okay, but I'm a but anybody I'm really cool with ain't gonna be mad at the guy. They're gonna come to the broad. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is the this is the problem with that. Half of these niggas that's saying they players ain't players. Not at nah, all. Because they doing faulty stuff. They yeah. they throwing monkey fraudulent wrenches. Pay, fraudulent playing, man. They throwing monkey wrenches in the game. They hating on you to the broad, telling the broad ill stuff smiling about you. Smiling in your face. They smiling name, in good. your face. And when you catch it, let me tell y'all something out there. If you know a person that a dirty Mac you to a woman, that ain't your boy. And if you realize it, I don't even know if it's worth confronting. I like to confront niggas, man. But like, the, it's going to go somewhere dead. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to go somewhere respectable. It's going to go to fisticuffs. Yeah. Because most people who do stuff like that ain't going to give you, unless they just a hog-ass nigga, most niggas ain't going to be like, yeah, I dirty Mac her to get the pussy. I, I didn't mean nothing by it, but that's that's how I, could, that's how I got it. Most I realize that's the only way I can get it, so I did it. My bad, bro. I know of niggas who have called me right after they did it, like, bro, she, she throwing it at me. I said something, but I didn't mean it, man. I just want I just want to let you know. I forgive that. Yeah, no. hey, that hey, you don't know, mean no, that. no, you can't though. Okay, how you supposed you, to run it? You you can't because you knew what the mission was before it even finished. Right. So I should have been if I'm follow, I should have been texting you while I was following the bitch to the spot. Right. That's real spit. You know what I'm saying? Because if you didn't do that, then you dirty Mac the whole time. Is it wrong to ask a chick if your boy smashed because you want to smash her? Because look, well, listen, listen. Why are you having a conversation with my name in it? With my name in it. Or talking about another nigga when the business is between me and you. He got no play in the business. But most of these cats do that. Most of these insecure cats who are comparing themselves to Com you competition. And, and competing with you, they automatically, for some reason, they don't they, either they don't believe the truth coming from you, or their 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 ego only tells them that a woman could be honest with them. You get these dudes who are players, yeah. and they believe everything a bitch say. To me, you're not a player if you basing everything on a bitch say. To me, you base the way you move on what the situation says. A bitch gonna say anything. Right. Yeah. But the situation and the variables involved in the situation is going to tell me all I need to know. First of all, if I'm fucking on a bitch that used to fuck my homie and she never bring it up, that's a faulty bitch anyway. If I'm fucking a bitch I, and she used to fuck you, she's supposed, she's supposed to be like, if she an honorable hoe, because there's honorable hoes out here. I, I just want to let you know, I used to fuck a AD. We had a situation and we no longer fucking around. I just want to put that on the table before we go any further. Yeah. That's an honorable bitch, but I if she, she, I don't think that's honorable. She just don't want to get embarrassed. Okay, so because what she be could, she should have said that before y'all even. I mean, once y'all started interacting. So what's so, what, what would an honorable uh, before y'all start fucking? Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's too much social media for us. To, bitch, you can go back three weeks and find me and Craig on the picture. Right. You know what I'm saying? But my thing is. In my in my safety net is I've never asked you what the situation was. If I came and pushed up on you, it's because I didn't know you and I thought you were attractive. And I'm not asking about your boyfriend. I'm not asking about your history. I'm not asking about none of that because that has nothing to do with our attraction. But if I find out during the conversation, if she acknowledges you or Ja, then I have to take a step back on that. Right. Right. You see I, what I'm saying? I yeah. agree. If yeah. I'd have come up to her and I ain't talked about you or I ain't talked about roast me, I ain't talking about to the max. Right. <laughs> it's, 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 it, we at the bar. We at Fridays. Yeah. I'm talking about the wings and things. I agree. 100%. And you the things. <laughs> so it's up to her to bring it up, right? Yeah. Absolutely. It's always got to be up to her because it's her body. Yeah. You know, a lot a lot of cats out here because they feel like they these, they, you know, everybody feel like they exceptional, which you should. But some of these niggas feel like they own these bras. Yeah, bro. It's still her vagina, nigga. Come on, my nigga. So she could do with it what she pleases. 
Absolutely. So if you that nigga, she should just be handing it over to you. You shouldn't she have should to dirty mac me to get it. Nah, not at all. Let me tell you something as a as a dad with two daughters, nigga. And I got bad daughters. Mm -hmm. I ain't got average daughters. <laughs> right. I told my oldest daughter and I told my youngest daughter in the second conversation. Don't go to a nigga's house. Don't go out of town with a nigga unless you plan on fucking. And this was my verbiage to my two daughters. Don't right. put yourself or another nigga in a situation that I have to clean up. Mm -hmm. That's real shit. Yeah. yeah so for, so after your daddy's telling you this, and a year and a half from now, I find out that you was at a, some guy's house and it was an un unfortunate situation, you shouldn't even have to be in that motherfucker unless, unless your program was his program. Y'all on the same program. It, it, it's, it's, or it's gonna be there. It's nowhere in the world, Ja, that I can come clean that up. Right. Because I already told you what the information was. Any any woman mm -hmm. purposely fucking with two niggas that are friends, that, hey, that's man. a faulty. That's a faulty broad, man. That's a fuck. Niggas kill over bras, man. Right. Period point blank. Is this, and there are villain women who like that type of they like to create watch wars. This, watch this. Yeah, that's why they fuck with emotionally. Hey, but you need to stop fucking with Mike and John and Joe. They be like, why? It's fun. Okay. <laughs> That's real spill. Joe dead, Mike in jail, and yep. you got two bullet holes in your body. You having to live through that shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, did we talk about this on air, the most valuable NBA teams? Yeah, you just, you you you, you stunned Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I thought it was the Knicks. That was the yep, Knicks. Yeah, we was on air with that, huh? Okay. Yeah. That was gangster. I didn't know that. Yeah, that just. Hey, that's crazy how. So can we say the franchise got turned around by one man? Oh, it was a team effort, but like, no, no man. one man. Steph Curry is the most important player to a franchise besides Michael Jordan, and and it hasn't happened ever. Well, he might be the most important player to a franchise ever. Yeah. Also, cause, cause because I'm, the Lakers had a culture before Magic. Yep, yeah. the Bulls Nigga, though. Nigga, the so, so. the Warriors hadn't won a championship since Will Chamberlain. The Lakers had a culture before Kareem. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they had Jerry West, L.J. They had Taylor. A, they had a culture before Wilt. Right. They had George Mikan. Right. That's real, yeah. The crazy thing about it is no one knew this. I don't think anybody's going to sit here and tell me that they thought that uh, Steph Curry was going to be considered the best point guard of his yeah. period. Right. In conversation. Yeah. Two years in the league when Monte Ellis was a warrior, during that time, you would I would never think that. I don't think I don't think and I, I can hear. I know you guys are basketball enthusiasts, right? I don't think his his uh what they call it his glow up nigga yeah right is, is is exceptional yeah yeah I mean it's one of a kind. I think the Tom Brady is the biggest, most definitely. Tom Brady is the greatest. Uh, um, He's the last pick in the draft and the best yeah. quarterback to ever play. Football, Ever. possibly, yeah. And right. the, the the crazy part about Tom Brady is he wasn't the best quarterback on the team. Right. Nah. You know, it took Drew uh, Bledsoe yeah. to get hurt. He wouldn't have, he wouldn't have started until Drew Bledsoe got traded. And right. you know what right. would have happened? He wouldn't have had the talent around him that Drew had at that time. Right. So because yeah, the, the contracts would have been niggas would have been yeah. leaving and yeah. Somebody said Brian, man, look, Brian can't be the greatest at everything, mm -mm. man. He the on court talent. LeBron's supposed to be who he is right now. Yeah. I best drugs. basketball let, let, player in high school for let, sure. Let, other, other than uh, Cook, yeah. Other than Cook, he's the best player in, in the NBA for most of his career. He he was supposed to be that. Yeah. Kobe Bryant was a lottery pick. They expected him to do big things. I mean, Maybe Steph Curry was the, was he the seventh pick? He was the first rounder, right? But Steph Curry, yeah. Okay, because the Knicks, uh, he was one pick to the Warriors right before the Knicks. I think at twenty. Nine. He wouldn't have made it with the Knicks after that injury. Yes, they he would have traded him. No, he would have made it with the Knicks. You think they would have let him play that Greg, style? Why are you ball? hating on the Knicks, man? It's Mark Jackson gave him the confidence and the freedom to be who he is. Who was the coach of the Knicks at that time? If he would have gave him the Mark Jackson would have still been there. He wasn't the factor that lets you know that. Right. You know. Somebody said Curry is not a PG. You crazy? He is a point guard. Who? Yeah. Somebody in the comments said Curry is not a PG. The nigga said Coolio was a rapper too. I bet. <laughs> 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 County line was my joint. We are gonna wrap this show up, man. Hell yeah! 
Um, man, Josh, anything they need to look out for? I know you shouted some stuff out before. Hey, man, go to Indiegogo.com. Indiegogo, I-N-D-I-E-G-O-G-O.com. Type in Big Ja, right? Big Ja with two Gs. And you'll see that I'm crowdfunding for a movie. My first feature film I'm shooting next year alongside with my brother Craig Smith will be in it as Woo! well. Uh, called The Whole Crew is Stupid, the feature film. Um, please go ahead and pledge. I'm, I'm crowdfunding for the film so I can um, have this movie out for y'all by this time next year. I should be in pre-production. I mean, I should be in post-production. That's uh, right. The Whole That's Crew right. is Stupid, my first film I'm shooting the next year, bro. And I need y'all support and a little bit of bread if I could, man. Indiegogo.com, Big Ja. Uh, what's, pledge a little something so I can get this movie made. Thank what's you. The, what's it. the minimum we can pledge, y'all? The minimum is a dollar. Damn. Okay. Play, uh, nigga it, ain't it, got it. a dollar. Nigga want to get Black and Miles two for three dollars. I know. I know. I know. So Just if you rock with me one. and my content, yeah, you rock with Craig Fax, Craig Smith. Um, please, you can pledge a dollar or more. It's up to you. Not obligated at all. Just asking for some love, if what, possible. What if a nigga give you like two G's? Can he be in the movie? Hey. You can be in the movie. It might if you go on the website, it'll tell you the different tiers that you can pledge to that that can reward you certain things. There certain we things. go. Like you you can be in the movie for a certain amount of money that you pledge. Oh, I'll yeah. get it, but if you want to be in the movie, there is a way. Please subscribe to the channel. I appreciate y'all subscribing. Today's show is gonna be short because I got something I gotta run and do. But I'll be back on Thursday. We're gonna be working bits for for those of y'all don't understand the, the Thursday show. It's a comedic rant show. There's really no linearity to it. We just coming up with funny ideas and exploring them live on the air. We kind of bringing you into the process of creating jokes, and wow. creating bits, you know, on the spot. I've been doing that every Thursday for probably like five, six months. Some of y'all okay. didn't realize that that's what it was. But for the old, for those of y'all looking, you know, for me to delve into certain topics, it's four or five topics each episode, and we just rant and have fun and just go as far as we can with jokes on Thursday. That's a little bit different. It's a little bit different than the old Craig Facts where it's a room full of cats bagging. I'll eventually bring that format back, but right now I'm trying to come with this couple hours of, uh, you know, Pure dope comedy. comedy. So I got to create in front of y'all. So just, you know, delve into the process, man. I'm allowing you into my mind how I think of shit, how I come up with it. You know, some of y'all be saying dumb shit. Like, you just be saying anything. No, I'm not. Niggas exploring. It's like going right. to the park and working on your game, working on new moves. See what works, see what doesn't. So understand the process and respect it. If you don't, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, AD. Tell them where they can find you. Oh, shit. Hey, man, check this out. Um, I'm actually working on something, too. I, I appreciate uh, what Big Ja is doing. Um, I, don't, I'm, I got the number one sneaker protector in the world right now, bro. Yeah. Um, it's called the Heel Shield. Heel Shield. You can go to buyheelshield.com. Buyheelshield.com and grab you one. It's the number one protector right now. I'm in negotiation right now with uh, Foot Locker. I'm already on Amazon. Amen. Um, you can buy direct and you don't have to worry about none of that. Just go to buyheelshield.com and check out the number one sneaker protector where uh, we place it in your car, man, so you don't get those. Uh, that heel rash on the back of your that heel dirt rash. Absolutely, yeah. you take up the dirt rags. You put your shoes on while you drive, and um, go to Heel Shield by Shield dot com. And y'all know y'all can find me all over the place at AD Worldwide on all social media platforms. You already know what it is. I'm in the background here with Craig Fax. Um, make sure y'all tune in. Yes, sir. Hey man. Hey, look. Love all y'all, man. To all the haters, if you think I owe you something, get it from God, and I still love you, even though you don't love yourself. God, God, God. God. See y'all next episode. <laughs> hey, bro. bro. I remember, nigga, I was at a club called The Ice House. It's in San Diego. It's in North, North County, like Carlsbad or some shit. 